Hey guys, this is a Gretsch snare drum that I found laying around a pawn shop. It was in really rough shape when I found it, it didn't have any hoops, and it looked really old and dirty. But me being me, I couldn't resist the opportunity to try and restore this baby to its original glory. After a little diligent research, I figured out that this is most likely is a Gretsch Dixieland student model snare drum from the 1950s. I can't pin the date down for sure, but I do know that this is no older than 1962, because there's no sticker on the inside of the gray, lined shell. The catalog describes the shell as a three-ply construction. It doesn't specify the woods used, however if we look at it real close, it looks like a thick ply of mahogany sandwiched between two thinner plies of poplar. There are also six chrome-plated lugs with tension rod claws, a thin style butt plate, and a Gretsch Renown throw-off. The reason this snare drum has tension rod claws is to hold a single flange tube in place. Obviously I don't have one on the shell right now, but we're going to worry about that later. Looking at the state of the hardware, it's going to require a little bit of tinkering to get this stuff in its original condition again. Um, the first thing that I had to do was remove all of the hardware and assess any damage. Here I'm just going to show you a really easy trick for getting the springs out of these old lugs. You just use the flat end of a screwdriver and you can compress the spring easily and remove all the guts of the lug. So as you can see, the wrap is very old and dirty. Also, it's coming off of the shell in one of the positions there. So my priority right now is to remove any old glue residue, dust, debris, grime, anything like that, because I'm gonna re-glue the wrap to the shell, and in order to do that, I need to get a good bond, and to get a good bond, I need to have a clean surface to work with. Here I'm just using some wet or dry sandpaper. It's not wet. I don't want to introduce any kind of moisture to the shell or the wrap. And then I'm also using a tack cloth to clean up any kind of dust or residue that may be left behind from the sanding. What I'm using is some 3M contact cement and a foam brush. I'm liberally applying that to both the shell and the wrap. Um, because the wood is porous, it will absorb some of your contact cement, so you might have to use more than you'd expect. I'm being very careful not to misalign the wrap in any way as I bring it down here. Now the reason I'm being so careful is you really only get one shot with contact cement. It bonds instantly upon contact, hence the name. So the first thing that you do is you line it up perfectly and then you apply pressure to the middle of the shell first and then work your way out. This way you can prevent any kind of unnecessary air bubbles that might cause misalignment and cosmetically aren't very pretty. So by using a foam roller a plastic roller and then rolling the shell upon itself on a soft surface, I was able to get very good adhesion and all the holes lined up. As for cleaning up the shell, I'm going to be using a technique that I saw on another YouTube video from Mr. Drum Monkey. He got really great results from it, so I decided to give it a shot. I started with 200 grit sandpaper and worked my way up. The secret to this technique, as Mr. Drum Monkey says in his video, is to not over sand the shell. Really, you're working with very old material with a very thin, clear layer on top of it. So as soon as the dirt and the grime is gone, you have to stop sanding with the rough sandpaper and then move on. Also, take care when working around the badge. You don't accidentally want to scratch it. By going in small circles and taking my time, I avoided this. However, I haven't been as lucky in the past. But we're not going to talk about that. As for the hardware, I've already done a couple days soak in bleach and dish soap solution, but something weird kind of happened. I got this white precipitate on some of the lugs, and not all the rust uh, dissolved either, so I think I'm going to have to soak these again. As you can see, some of the pieces turned out fine, others had just residual rust and dirt on them. I don't really know why this happened, it might have something to do with the age of the metal, or it might just be the products that I used. Regardless, I'm going to have to soak these again, and I suspect that we're gonna need an acid to break down some of this precipitate. And so whenever I need an acid or just a rust removal in general, there's one product that's cheap, easy to find, and always available. Wow. 
While that all soaks, we're going to continue sanding the shell. After 800 grit, the shell started to take on a different characteristic. It didn't feel like a sanding job anymore and almost felt like a polishing job at this point. Because we were working with such fine grits, the shell was getting super smooth, so the whole process felt completely different. So this is still a 1500. I just want to kind of show you guys a little bit like what I do. Once I come to the edge here, I kind of start going a little... My once over, I like to call it. Not like so much attention to detail anymore, just kind of like, okay. Going over everything once more, making sure I didn't leave anything out. Meanwhile, in the Fortress of Solitude... The vinegar, as you can see, Lugs are now clean, I just wiped them off. There was no precipitate on them anymore. Put it through that two-stage bath process. I'm overall very happy. You can see that there's minimal oxidate on these now. I just wiped these off and these look good enough to go. And it's not like something that I think people are gonna really pay attention to. When it comes to like lugs, strainer mechanism, stuff like that, I tend to go the extra mile just because I want to show them off because they are gonna be looked at. They are gonna be visible. Oh, and uh, Always, always, always use a fine mesh sieve when you're emptying your bath into the sink and always, always, always make sure that you have a drain catch there because it is very easy to lose these tiny little parts that are irreplaceable. So the very last thing I'm going to do with the hardware is take care of any of the residual dirt or rust that might be on these smaller pieces. I'm not going to do this with the big pieces like say the lugs or the strainer. I'm just using some isopropyl alcohol and a brass bristle brush to take care of any other crud that might be left. This is some WD-40 aerosol white lithium grease. I found it's pretty practical in getting everything coated nice and even. Finally, the very last thing I'm going to do to finish off this shell is to go over it with a rubbing compound and then buff it by hand with a microfiber cloth. One eternity later. Yeah, it took forever. But the results were well worth it. So I lied. The very last thing I'm going to do is condition the wooden shell. I found over the years, especially living in a harsh climate like I do, that if you forget to acclimatize your instrument, this might very well just save it. The oil penetrates the wood and keeps it moisturized. Now there are some people who say that this is completely unnecessary, but I'm a creature of habit and I'm going to stick to my guns. Here I have a cut up old vacuum cleaner filter. I found it's the right consistency and thickness to dampen the lug springs. You may have noticed with other snare drums that if you don't do this, there is a chance that you're gonna get a very annoying and uncontrollable ring from your snare drum. So spending the extra two seconds while reassembling everything to do this step will save you a lot of aggro later on. Finally, I'm just going to wax these bearing edges with some skateboard wax. This helps fill in any inconsistencies that there might be after all of these years. And in my personal opinion, you get a better tone out of the drum too. So Drum Factory Direct is a great resource for drum parts. I got everything I needed to finish the project, but more importantly, I wanted to talk about their B-Stock. Sometimes they sell discounted items that may not be cosmetically perfect, but still good, which led to a great deal on some single flange tubes that I couldn't pass up. I actually couldn't see anything wrong with the hoops I bought. Score! Also, I'm putting on some Evans Level 360 heads because the wider collar means I know they'll fit the oversized shell. That's not to say other companies don't have something similar. I know that Aquarian has the American Vintage and Remo has the Classic Fit, and they would have worked just fine too. So the original Dixie Lands came with 12 strand snares, and it just so happens I had an old Rogers 12 strand laying around. Might not be the best strands that I have, but it felt right putting them on this drum. As for tying off the snares, I'm using good old Venetian blind cord, which is cheap, readily available, and strong. Last but not least, I'm tying off everything as neat as possible for presentation's sake. So that just about wraps it up for this snare drum. I guess it's time to take it outside and give it a whirl.
And that's it! The Gretsch snare is finally done! The process was tedious, but relatively straightforward, and if you want, you can restore vintage drums too. All you need is patience and a gentle touch. I want to personally thank you so much for checking out my channel, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and check out some of my other videos. Or if you just want to leave a comment below and tell me what you thought, I would love to hear from you. If you want to see more drum restoration projects, hit subscribe and you'll be the first to know when I make something new. Well, that's it for me. I'm Nudpa Drums, and thank you for watching.